Coming up in today's video, an enchantment that has needed a reprint for years finally gets one, brand new adventure cards that continue to impress, and some pretty sweet lands as we get more of the Restless Cycle. Let's jump into the video. What's up everybody, thanks so much for being here, if you do enjoy, please hit the like button and subscribe, comment below, let me know what you think of the content so far, and of course, click that bell icon if you want to stay notified for all the up to the minute, up to date stuff, I don't fucking know, click the bell icon if you want to be notified when new videos come up, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, that's just sort of where I'm at, so listen, if you want to check out the channel membership and get yourself a free booster pack, any channel members in the month of August will receive a booster pack, it is $5, there is a QR code on the screen, you can scan it, take you there, learn about all the other perks and stuff, it's five bucks, you do get a free pack, pretty cool, check it out for full details, but let's jump into the actual source material, and Wild Bell Drain has been pretty impressive to me so far, and it seems like some of you guys feel the same way, I ran a poll and asked people kind of where they're at right now and, and a lot of people seem to think you know we're it's impressive but they're waiting for a little bit more other people are just pretty impressed and i gotta be honest the reprint value in this set especially in the enduring enchantments is definitely really really good so yeah i'm optimistic i really am excited about the set as a whole and let's talk about some more of the cards First up, we've got Flick a Coin. This is two and a red, and it is an instant. It says Flick a Coin deals one damage to any target. You create a treasure token. Draw a card. I'm going to be honest with you. It's it's underwhelming. I, I only really included this here so I'd have enough cards to kind of make a full video. But um, I think it's too costly, even with the treasure token. This would have been fine as one and a red, and it might have actually been, like, decent. But it just kind of like another draft filler, maybe, like, pseudo-decent standard option at some point. But... They'll power creep this out, I'm sure. It's neat, but I don't understand why it has as big of a cost as it does when you consider the fact that it doesn't really do all that much. Now, Restless Spire. I just have to say, the artwork on this and on the other Restless Land that we've looked at so far is just absolutely A+, plus, S+, plus tier. This is just so, so cool, and I just want to, like, give it that kind of moment of acknowledgement. Uh, Restless Spire enters Battlefield Tap. You can tap, add blue or red, and then pay one blue, one red. Until end of turn, Restless Spire becomes a 2-1 blue-red elemental creature with, as long as it's your turn, this creature has first strike. It's still a land. Whenever Restless Spire attacks, scry one. I really like what they're doing with these. It is a shame, obviously. I think they're going to be, you know, not super great outside of maybe standard because, like, there are just other lands to do it better. And, and lands that come in tapped have to be really powerful in order to kind of get that attention. But I don't know. I mean, a 2-1 elemental with, with first strike and being able to scry definitely has its merit. I just, I mean, the artwork alone for me, it makes it a card I want to pick up. But it's just pretty cool. I don't think it's as good as, like, Restless Cottage. But... It's not horrible, and it's certainly better than just a generic tap land that comes into play and doesn't do anything. So we got that going for us. Three bowls of porridge. This is two, and it is a colorless artifact food. You can pay two and tap. Choose one that hasn't been chosen. Three bowls of porridge deals two damage to target creature. Tap target creature. Sacrifice three bowls of porridge. You gain three life. So basically, you get to use all three effects, but by the time you get to the end of that, you have to sacrifice it. And of course, being a food, it can be sacrificed to gain. But this, honestly isn't a terrible card. I mean, being able to deal two damage to get over something, kind of leave it for a later turn, or tap a creature. I really like this. It's a pretty cool utility card, and uh, I think it's standard specifically. It's going to definitely have some use, but it looks pretty good on the surface, and of course, we have to love the thematic inclusion of, you know, the fairy tales and Goldilocks. So, A-plus flavor win, no pun intended, and A-plus on the um, application. I think this is actually a pretty good card. Bramble Familiar is one in a green, and it is an elemental raccoon creature that says tap, add green, or pay one in a green discard a card return bramble familiar to its owner's hand its adventure sorcery side says five green green mill seven cards then put a creature enchantment or land from among the cards milled this way onto the battlefield now this is pretty damn good and the artwork is great i feel like i've said that a lot a plus on this set in terms of artwork i mean even if the set was bad the art is just top notch uh, this one is kind of interesting, though, because you can definitely stack your deck pretty easily and be able to mill and put stuff out. But then again, it costs seven, and there are other cards, you know, that green can play that do that for a lot less. But, you know, being able to bounce it back to the hand and then use it as a sorcery is certainly interesting. It's definitely got, like, loopable utility. Also, being a mana dork, I like it. I, I like it a lot. I wonder whether or not it could have just cost one green, but maybe it would have been too good. I, I don't know, obviously. They don't seem to want to do that too much except for, like, you know, the elves, but... It's a pretty cool card on the surface, so this is one I, I'm very intrigued by. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments down below. Do you think it's going to see play, um, and do you think it's pretty good? The Apprentice's Folly, a saga, two, blue, red, and for the first two phases, as choose target non-token creature you control that doesn't have the same name as a token you control. 
Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary and is a reflection in addition to its other types and has haste. So this is really, really solid. I mean, being able to make copies of creatures, but make them not legendary. And obviously you can only do it once because you can't keep cloning tokens if you control other tokens with the same name. But you can pull off some pretty cool power plays with this, I think. And being able to dupe your legendaries, even if for a short period of time, is definitely nothing to sneeze at. And then when it does get to phase three, you sacrifice all reflections you control. So you do only get temporary use for this stuff, but you can definitely pull off some powerful combos. And perhaps if you can sacrifice this card before it gets to that point, uh, you can keep Keep those creatures on the field and not have to worry about losing them but this one does feel to me like a really good card for is it strategies and yeah i'm uh, happy to see it now we're going to take a quick foray into reprints looking at a few enchantments and starting us off we've got raid bombardment this is two in a red of course a reprint enchantment whenever a creature control with power two or less attacks raid bombardment deals one damage to the player or planeswalker that creature is attacking certainly a solid card definitely neat in like goblins but cool artwork here and just nice to see a somewhat decent enchantment getting that reprint Parallel Lives. This is an MVP. I mean, this is bigger than doubling season for me in terms of the reprint announcement. This was only printed once in Innistrad, and then it did have a Judge promo, but I don't really count that in terms of, like, reprint accessibility. But, man, they not only did that, but they crushed the art. This is... So I love the artwork here. As you can see, I made it the thumbnail background. This is just a super cool card. Definitely needed a reprint, um, because those those token strategies, especially Commander, are so popular. And, and just to get Parallel Lives, doubling season, and anointed procession prior to, you know, Commander Masters in this set would run you, like, 200 bucks for three cards that can be pretty crucial in any engine that can utilize them. So I am really, really happy to see this. And honestly, they're kind of crushing the reprints on this better than they did with Commander Masters for the most part, with obviously uh, a few exceptions. But this is a really, really good inclusion as well. So A-plus Wizards on that. And finally, for the reprints omniscience i know this isn't the best quality picture they only put out a small kind of um graphic of it i couldn't get like a high res image i apologize but the artwork on this is really cool and this is just another really strong reprint and this also you know will be one of the ones that has the confetti style artwork i'm hopefully we'll get to see what that looks like a little bit later down the road uh as people start to open them but this another really good card another really good reprint and that head enchantment subset is just starting to look really really strong so i just wanted to shout out those reprints and let's get back to the new cards Likeness Looter. This is one blue, one black. It is a creature fairy shapeshifter with flying. You can tap to draw a card, then discard a card, so it loots. And then you can pay X. Likeness Looter becomes a top of target creature card in your graveyard with mana value X, except it has flying and this ability. Activate only as a sorcery. This is actually a really neat card. It's cool to see fairies getting more support, but also this isn't till end of turn so this can just become a copy of whatever but it keeps that ability so that later you can make other copies of stuff i think you're going to see a lot of people starting to find ways to play around with this and interestingly it's not a legendary so you can't have this as a commander which is a shame because it'd be really fun for some strategies but i think i kind of understand the thought behind it not being a commander um a really really solid card and i definitely think one that's going to have some impact at the very least it has potential for some fun strategies Red Cap Gutter Dweller. This is a new goblin. It is two red red with menace. When it enters the battlefield, create two one one black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on this card and exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Really freaking good for goblins and rat tribal, I suppose, but Menace giving you two tokens when it comes out and basically impulse draw if you sacrifice another creature. And in goblins, you always have extra tokens. Buff this up, get extra cards from the deck. All in all, a really, really solid addition for that. And I think Goblin, Cranko, EDH decks are really going to like this card for sure. Alion's Messenger, two in a blue. It is a fairy noble with flying. It says whenever you attack with one or more fairies, draw a card, then discard a card. When you discard a card this way, put a plus one plus one counter on target fairy you control. It's honestly not bad. It attacking on its own triggers discard and draw, and then it does get counters. And certainly there's got to be ways to combo that with some of the other blue cards that trigger when you draw cards. I definitely don't think this is, you know, the best card on its own but it definitely feels like it could fit really well into combo pieces and if you know fairy tribal continues to get more support especially with the commander deck i could see it having a slot there and finally for this video virtue of persistence after we saw the white virtue yesterday that was really really solid this one is pretty good too it is five black black enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep put target creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under your control and then the sorcery side is one in a black sorcery adventure target creature gets minus three minus three till end of turn you gain two life i wish they'd made it an instant that would have been really good but i get why they didn't uh this is pretty solid and if you have ways to like lower the cost to cast this it can basically put the opponent under a lot of pressure um you know black is typically one of the best colors for like reviving stuff with a lot of strong creatures that have graveyard effects or you can mill them and bring them back and this is another really cool enchantment that can do that i'm happy to see them giving adventures some real love in the set and i'm hopeful that that means that uh they might start to actually see some more play across 
a multitude of formats. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of the cards from today. I did post a video earlier this morning as well, so if you haven't seen that one, feel free to check it out. And stay tuned to the channel the rest of the week as we continue to cover all Wild Abelgerian spoilers as we go along. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.